Hey, hey, hey. Welcome back, everybody. As promised, today we are doing part two in our plant advice series. My name is Darylin, and this is Pippa. Thanks for joining us. Today we are going to be talking about the top best pieces of plant care advice that I've been given over the course of my plant journey. But before we get into it, if you could please do me a solid and give this video a like and maybe even subscribe, it would really help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Additionally, if you have best pieces of advice that you've been given, please, please, please put them in the comments below. I would love to read them and so would other members of our community. You know, we're all just here trying to, trying to help each other grow and succeed. And with that in mind, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna talk about is one of the earliest pieces of good advice that I adopted. And that has to do with knowing your space, knowing your conditions, and for me, I have a very low light space. And so that advice was bite the bullet, sis, and get some friggin' grow lights. I'm not kidding. Grow lights completely changed the outcome of the plants that I was caring for. They all started to grow so much faster. I started to see certain of them getting a little bit bigger here and there. And I also started to have an easier time with watering. I noticed that my soil was drying out in a more reasonable amount of time. My plants weren't trying to excrete as much water through their leaves. Because of this, my plants were better, they were happier, they were healthier, and it was just so much easier. Also, I didn't have to do the dance of like opening this curtain, opening that curtain, opening and closing the blinds, moving things around, dancing that dance that we dance with natural light. It's just so much easier. Someday I do hope to be lucky enough to live in a space that is a little bit more predisposed to be light and airy and amazing for my plants. Truth be told, I dream dreams of skylights every night. <laughs> but that's not the reality for now. We all know the housing market is atrocious and it's no more true anywhere else than it is in California so I'm still waiting for that dream space where I get natural light so for me grow lights were the way to go speaking of watering and getting better results with your watering another critical piece of advice that I took to heart and integrated into my houseplant hobby was semi hydro and self watering if you haven't ventured into this before like it will absolutely change your life especially especially if you are an anthurium lover i can't stress it enough self-watering and semi-hydro has made anthurium care so much easier for me for the most part anthurium are very picky about how they're watered they really don't like to dry out and they like consistency and so the semi-hydro and the self-watering really puts that on cruise control for them. Other plants of mine that really have benefited from semi-hydro are my philodendron, I'll talk about red, among others. It's just made everything easier for me and as my collection grows, it is definitely making the chores and the labor that goes into keeping these plants happy and healthy a lot more manageable. I know that with things kind of opening up again and kind of going back to semi-normal, a lot of folks are busier than they used to be and some of us may even have to go back to the IRL office. Shudder. Self-watering is a really good investment if you don't want to significantly downsize your collection, but you legitimately have no idea how you're going to stay on top of keeping everybody watered because like, that's a good question. There's just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of chores. So thank you so much to all the people who told me about semi-hydro, about self-watering, gave me recommendations for pots. It has changed everything. Once again, speaking of water, another piece of advice that seems a little bit intimidating at first, but is totally, totally worth it, is to pH balance your water. I can't stress this enough, you guys. It took me a year, a year to feel like I wasn't intimidated enough to start trying to pH balance my water. And once I did, I was like, 
dumbfounded by how easy it was. It's really not rocket science. There's a couple different ways that you can do it, but I don't really care how you do it, just figure out a way because it literally makes such a big difference. I started pH balancing my water and I immediately started seeing plants size up, especially my philodendrons. Like I started pH balancing my water and almost immediately my Splendid, my Gloriosum, and my Monochrysum. Also, I would say my Monstera albos, they started putting out leaves that were bigger. So if you haven't thought about it or looked into it yet, I highly encourage you to. I did release a video not too long ago about how I pH balance my water. You're welcome to watch it to kind of get your toe in the water to see how it works please do. It's really not as intimidating as you think it's going to be. And I swear, I swear it makes a huge difference. Speaking of things that make a huge difference for your plants, the next piece of advice that was probably the most transformative for me as far as leveling up my skills as a plant parent, as a propagator, and as a rehabber was get a grow tent. I will never stop talking about how much I love my grow tent. I love that thing. I honestly got just like the cheapest one on Amazon. It's not one of the fancy brands and it's like the smallest one. It's only like two feet by two feet and then five feet tall. It's like a little tiny closet. But I kid you not, ever since I got that grow tent, I haven't lost a single import. I haven't lost any propagations that I've put in there. It's amazing. And if you have a specific plant that you really, really want to grow because you're trying to trade it or you just want it to grow, like what have you, you pop it in the grow tent, the grow tent takes care of it. I've also discovered that if I have a plant that's having trouble pushing a leaf, I can just pop it in the grow tent and the high humidity takes care of it for me. I haven't had any leaves ripping themselves apart for the plants that actually fit in there. A friend of mine gave me this advice a while ago. I'm giving it to you. Trust me, get a grow tent. And I know what you may be thinking, Darylin, no, I don't want to. I am an aesthetic queen and I cannot abide the eyesore that is a grow tent in my space. I am holding out for a Mills bow. I mean, I get it. Like, I get it. The Mills bows do look absolutely awesome. They're so minimalist and clean and those are really nice pieces of furniture and I, I get it. I would love to have a Mills bow. I just don't personally have the space. A Mills bow is a great solution for plants that are display pieces that already look really, really great that you want to maintain. But really when it comes down to it, the grow tent is much, much better for rehabbing, for propagating for rooting finicky plants. Just all around, that's the big leaves. Mills bows are great for display. The grow tent is much better for all of the challenges that you're probably facing that are making you think that you need a Mills bow. Plus the grow tent is way cheaper, way cheaper to set up. And they're pretty much always in stock. You could go online and order everything you need and have it delivered to you in a couple of days. Whereas who even knows? Who even knows when Millsbos will ever be in stock again in your area? Because let's face it, Ikea shipping is super duper expensive. I love my grow tent. I'm never going back. And someday when I have space to have a Millsbo, I'll just have both. So find a spot in your house that's hidden away in a corner, behind a door, in your laundry room, in a closet, whatever. Find it, get yourself a grow tent, you won't regret it. And now this brings us to the last piece of advice that we are going to talk about today on my best advice list. This I honestly think is like the ultimate piece of advice because it's so intuitive, but yet I think a lot of people haven't quite put the dots together. And that is that you need to treat your pests at every stage of their life cycle. Okay, hang on, let me explain. So what that means is that when you have discovered that one of your plants is a pest infestation, you can't just treat it one and done. You can't just rely on the product that you're using to take care of everything in one application. And there's a lot of reasons for that, but just trust me when I tell you that most pests, being insects, they have multiple life stages. And so there's going to be 
eggs you need to kill, there's going to be larvae you need to kill, there's going to be adults you need to kill. And one application is probably not going to kill off every generation of the pest. If you spray and get all the adults but none of the eggs die, in a couple weeks you're going to have an infestation again. And that just gives more potential for it to spread to other plants before you notice it. So depending on the pest that you've identified, whether or not you can tell what it is, you need to make sure that you're treating for pests when you spot them, and then again a couple days later, and then again a couple days later, so on and so forth, until you're really sure that they're gone, you've nipped it in the bud at every stage of their life cycle. And then figure out some sort of preventative measure so that you never actually have to see the bugs again the next time. That has definitely helped me out so much. I got a wonderfully nasty surprise of a thrips infestation this year. God, I swear thrips are just going around this year. Like you never used to hear about people getting thrips. It was always spider mites, but I swear this year, everyone and their brother got thrips and it sucks. Like it sucks. I wouldn't wish it on any plant parent. However, this advice of treating them at every stage in their life cycle has helped me to squash that thrips infestation and at this point I'm pretty sure that they're completely gone. I'm going to continue to do my preventative pest treatment because, you know, there's other pests that those treatments cover as well that it's just good to continue to prevent. But if I had just thought like, oh, I'll just, you know, spray one application and then, sorry guys, my boyfriend just came in and Pippa left to go see her dad, but where was I? Oh, that's right. So if I hadn't known that I needed to treat the thrips at every stage in their life cycle and I had just treated them one time and then waited until I saw adult bugs again until I treated it again, I would have never gotten rid of those little buggers. So treating pests at every stage in their life cycle is definitely tried and true wisdom. If you hadn't heard this before, you're hearing it now. It really, really changed everything for me and really helped me out. So that's gonna be it for today. Thank you guys so much for chilling with me. Go ahead and give this video a like and let me know in the comments what you think the best plant advice that you've ever been given is. I would actually really like to see all of these tips and I really hope that a lot of people do let me know what their favorite piece of advice is because like I'm always trying to like you know, level up in my plant game. So please let me know. Have a good one, you guys. Bye.